Hey folks, this is Decoherent, and welcome to a new playthrough of The Council. So The Council is a new narrative mystery adventure game by Big Bad Wolf Studio. So what this game promises is permanent consequences to every decision we make as we play through the game and develop our character, leading to a unique story, which sounds really interesting to me. This is also an episodic game, which is the first I've ever played in this format, so that should be kind of cool. Beyond that, I'm going into this game completely blind. Literally all I know about it is that it sounds interesting and has good reviews, and it sort of reminded me of an Agatha Christie novel, and really what more could you ever ask? So let's just go ahead and jump right in. not getting anywhere with this von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh, that's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair on my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling it at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. I get jokes. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened the shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchardt. Von Borchardt. Hmm? Listen, let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Um, okay, let's trust mom. Please, be my guest, mother. Mm. Ah. Come on. Shoot him. Oh. Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm, means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No, even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mm. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt. Okay. Music is, uh, 
oddly inappropriate for what we're doing. Didn't have a chance to read that. Okay. One month later. All right, Lord Mortimer. Are we attending one of his parties? Very ominous, I'm not going to lie. Well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Von Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. I agree. The Mad Ones. Okay. I'm down with madness. Let's do madness. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. Hmm. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Ouch. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost oh, mystical oh, object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think good. about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Mm. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh no, we have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Um... Personal reasons. Your Eminence, with all due respect, I prefer to keep my reasons for coming here to myself. I promise, it has nothing to do with the legendary party that you all appear to be preparing for. I believe what you will, my son. However, everything is related to the legendary parties organized by our host. Yeah. I'll be the judge of that, Cardinal. Hmm. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island, and only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. Uh, I like playing things a little close to my chest, if you'll pardon the pun. Let's kind of deflect here without giving away any further information. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Ominous. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. It's all right. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. Right? If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. <laughs> Are you all right? Okay. Mother? Oh shit, your hand. Um. So? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah. No one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yet, we're talking about the book. Sure. 
Right. Just one thing left to no, do. No, mother, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There's no other way. If you, if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But I trusted you. Three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Don't! No! No! You can run if you want to, Sarah, but you will pay for this. What? Okay. This is not a great start to our trip. Uh, Louis, are you alright? What's going on? Here, take this. Thanks. I'm sorry. Keep it. <laughs> are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't why don't you just go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sure. So is that yes. prescient or what? Fine. Okay. I definitely have to find mother quickly. Hopefully she still has a hand at this point. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me for God's sake? Okay. We need to find you, mother. Okay. Well, this is off to a good start. Okay. Um, here, if you'll give me one moment, I just need to fix the controls. Okay, well, that didn't really help, but it's okay. All right. Well, this is off to a weird start. Oh, look at this. That's pretty cool. So, Nutball Visions, Mystery Island, Nosebleeds, sounds good to me. Let's go check it out. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? Ooh, okay. So, diplomat, I shine in society, a talented speaker, he avoids faux pas and convince those with whom he is talking without offending them. Politics is his field of predilection. An occultist, master of deception, convinced of the importance of knowledge, he's acquired extensive experience in science and in the arts. Using others to achieve his own ends does not bother him. Or a detective, where we excel in investigation, trained to notice every detail in his surroundings as well as the people he questions. A hands-on man, he does not shy away from the direct approach. Ooh. Um, I, I gotta go occultist. Come on. So let's view skills here. So, okay, oh, this is cool. So, we have three available here. So this looks like our skill tree. Interesting. Okay, so occultism. So we've got level one that unlocks some dialogues. Uh, rely on your knowledge of myths, occult and religious symbols, as well as ancient languages and secret societies. Okay, that's pretty cool. And we have, we benefit from a sound cultural background on the arts, geography, and history. And being up to date with scientific knowledge and medieval techniques. Okay, that's weird. So, or we could spend points over here. This is diplomatic, right? Yeah, so we can convince people the sheer force of our will and our attitude. We can express our grasp of ge uh, geopolitical situation. Or divert people's attention. Okay, that's all very nice. Okay, these are nice, but let's just... So we've got some points in here. We have seven effort points to spend in our skills. We've got one point in manipulation and one point in psychology. Okay. So what should we put some points into? Um, we'll start with the occult, of course, because that's awesome. I like being up to date with science. Yep, that's cool. And... I don't know if we should spread these out or specialize or what. Psychology is good. So is vigilance. Yeah, these require three points. These just require one. Something like that. Yeah, three points to get to level one. Okay, that's interesting.
let's just put some points in here. I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, okay, so we have to put three points into this to even reach level two. So we're at level one and all this stuff, and at level zero... Oh, okay, okay, I understand now. Let's put some points into science. We only have three available points, so actually that isn't super useful. But let's do it anyway. Sure. Okay, so space to... Uh, access our menu. I've been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money... I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Oh, fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Let's see here. Let's... I want to keep my thoughts to myself, but at the same point, I don't know what's going on enough here to start playing people. So let's stick with a tiny bit of honesty. Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. Hmm. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. <laughs> Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No, sorry. I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I am so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. That's mildly mysterious. Okay, so my skills allow me to discover hidden details. Select the object that's most suggestive of the situation in order to discover them. Opportunities don't consume effort points. To access the skill required for the situation, you just have to have unlocked it. Okay, select the object that's most suggestive of the situation in order to discover hidden details. Okay. Interesting. Oh, uh... Oops. Okay, when the time limit's over and answer is automatically selected, check the timer. Okay, um... I'm heading off. Don't get left behind. I'm coming. Okay, well, I blew that. So we're off to a great start here. We're going like this, Emily. But you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Okay. Well, this is off to a good start. So I obtain talents when carrying out certain actions. Remember to review their unlock conditions and effects as they offer interesting improvements. Okay. So that's in the menu. Okay, so. Wow. Okay. So our inventory we have. Plus one skill on occultism. Okay, that's cool. We have a handkerchief. We have an invitation. Dear Monsieur de Richet, I am writing to you to express my embarrassment regarding the situation in which I find myself. As you probably know, I had invited your mother, Sarah de Richet, to join me on my island several weeks ago. We had projects in common regarding your order. Her stay was going smoothly until yesterday when your mother suddenly disappeared. I do not want to overworry you, but I would like you to join me as soon as possible so we can shed some light on this mystery. Please accept, sir, the expression of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Lord William Mortimer, Marquis of Westfordshire. Okay. It's a little weird. So there's our journal. Oh, jeez. Okay. So. Hi, Mom. 34 years ago, Sarah took over one of the most important se the secret societies, the Golden Order. A woman of strong will, Sarah endeavored to infiltrate the highest circles of society. 
politics, trade, transactions, secrets of state, or paranormal spheres, the Order had an eye over everything. One of the biggest areas of growth that Sarah brought to the Order was the development of its branches in America, Europe, and Central Africa, not to mention the expansion of her occult section, which she took care of personally. Since he was just a boy, Sarah has been preparing her son Louis to become the new face of the Golden Order. All right. Emily. She is an English duchess close to the English crown. Very discreet about her origins, Emily only came into the political scene after her wedding that some qualified as a marriage of interest to an old English aristocrat on the decline. Libertarian, modern, but discreet, she's taken it upon herself to establish close ties with her peers. In a few years, she's become the favorite diplomat of the queen, which is probably what prompted her prime minister, William Pitt, to take her as a private secretary, thus provoking much suspicion and jealousy. Okay. As a regular visitor, Emily accepted Sir Gregory Holmes' invitation to come to Lord Mortimer's Island because, for nothing else in the world, would she miss one of these famed receptions. Okay. Then there's us. The only son of Sarah. We are a young Parisian aristocrat. Ever since he was a small child, Louis moved in his mother's circles, and so it was natural that on his 14th birthday he entered the Golden Order, the secret society headed by Sarah. Precocious, Louis progressed quickly at her side, despite the daily treatment his mother prescribed for his chronic migraines. He climbed the ladder until he was able to assist his mother in occult cases for which he was particularly talented. As time went by, he became shaped in the image that his mother had held for him. Everything pointed to, one day, young Louis becoming the head of the Golden Order. Daily migraines that we're getting treatments for. Okay. And then... His Eminence, the Cardinal Giuseppe Piaggi, is a, leg uh, a legate of Pope Pius VI. A distinguished speaker, Giuseppe worked throughout his career to serve the principles of the Roman Catholic Church. A man of science and amateur philosopher, he quickly caught the ear of the Pope who discreetly named him Cardinal in pectore. He was thus able to use this relationship of trust to help Pius VI in his difficult mission of guiding the faithful. Invited by Sir Gregory Holm, Piaggi is delighted to meet his old friend Mortimer in order, in order to represent the interests of the Holy See. Okay, we have our map. We haven't learned anything yet. Here's us that I kind of screwed up. Talents, oh my god. Okay, so we get extra time for opportunities. Holy crap. Okay, I'm going to read through these. Feel free to pause these, so I'm just going to click through them fast. Okay, I have a better plan. Let's do all these at the end. So we have a point manipulation, uh, point in psychology, and occult classes are less difficult. Okay. So unfortunately, I blew that whole conversation thing. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. That is convenient. Okay. Whoa, don't fall off the edge. Okay, so these are points of interest. Royal Jelly. Do I have Royal Jelly? Plus one to use it. I don't have any. Oh, we have Royal Jelly. Oops, okay. So... Collector Coins, yeah. Royal Jelly, restore two effort points. Okay. And these are effort points that allow us to use our skills and if we collect amber fragments, we gain effort points. Okay. Okay. Sure. Might have helped if I'd learned something about these mechanics ahead of time, but where's the fun in that, right? All right. Good evening, good sir. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Let's see here. What do you know about my mother? And what's up with the mask? But I can't ask you that yet. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sarah's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But sir may rest assured we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. Hmm. What do you mean? 
On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seem to have left the manor last night. Hmm. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. Okay, so skills give us access to unique choices and actions at the cost of effort points. Okay. Alright, I wish I could kind of see these over here. Uh, I'd like to know if there were any... Oh, I can't. Okay. So, never mind. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And mm. as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep. And no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to Sir's mother. A handkerchief. Really? The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials SDR. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of Sir's mother. Sarah de Richet. Can I have that? I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. Oh. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll on the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Hmm. Okay. Uh. So I can't take any of these yet. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Nice. Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? <laughs> Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. Nice. Nice. Interesting. Indeed, your handkerchief, mother. He must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Okay, let's check out this handkerchief first. So what do we have here? Can we inspect it any further? The blood stain on it is yours. That's that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, okay. It carries her initials. Okay. So, can I look around any more quickly here? Okay, there's run. That's good. Oh, I can't. Okay, there we go. What do we have here? Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean. Hmm. The tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. That's very clever. Well, let's take it, obviously. This might just come in handy. Bars are excellent for persuading people. Okay, and then there's something else right here. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. So, she's not looking for food then, I guess. We could at least make a tiny assumption. What else do we have around here? What's over here? Okay, more royal, royal jelly. That's a hard word for me to say for some reason. Some rope. Apparently no one's touched it for a good long time. Rope is very important. Okay, anything down here by the boats? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Let's see what's hidden inside. Ooh. So, let's examine the letters one at a time. Okay. Ooh, ideograms. That's one I want to start with. Hmm. A letter written in an oriental language. I apparently don't know this language. I have the slightest idea what it says. Unfortunate. Okay. To Mr. Carl Corey. What have we here? It's too badly written. I, I can't make out the address. <sighs> All you guys have crappy handwritings? All right, to Mr. Galbraith. Address is 50 Bedford Square, London. Interesting. So this is outgoing mail. Okay. And to Mr. Xavier. 
The address he's in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Hmm. Okay. So what about the other letters? Oh, good lord, there's a lot of these. Okay. So, to Mr. P.V. Hoven. Hoven? Probably a Dutchman. Okay. And then to his eminence. Giovanno, and I'm not taking a stab at the other two. For the Vatican. Oh, apparently I know this name. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI. Born Giovanni Brasci. Ah. Which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person? Well, we did meet a cardinal. Okay. Let's see here. Samuel Ritter Doshua. <laughs> Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Riche. Ah ha ha ha. You wanted to write to me then. Clever. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richer. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name, okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think, Godoy, Godoy, Manuel Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? Ah, no politics. I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. Interesting. So I wonder if it would be useful to spread some points around just to open up some basic dialogues. So there's a few more letters we hadn't taken a look at yet. Um, Let's look. What are the ones we hadn't glanced at yet? Okay, so, Mr. H. B. De La Bath. An address in Cairo, Egypt. Mortimer communicates with the whole world, apparently. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. That's interesting. Alright, is there anything else down here that looks suggestive to us? No. Oh. Alright. Okay, let's take a look at the stuff we picked up. So I think we've already read this. Okay, so we've got the letter, we have an iron bar, and thought we had some rope at some point. Apparently not. Okay, that's interesting. So every time I use one of these skills, this uses up an effort point. Okay, I wonder if there's another way to refill it beyond using this royal jelly? Very interesting. Okay, I'm not seeing any more clues. Is this light reflecting, or is this something over here? Nope, this is something. I think this chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Can I poke in it? Apparently not. You sure I can't poke it? Okay. Looks like the barrel's been broken for quite some time. That's interesting. So what's in it? Hmm. Okay, let's continue our way on down the wharf here. Or does this head on up? Where do these two go? Let's just kind of take a look in here quick. So these lead to the staircase on its way up. Okay. It's just not totally clear from this distance whether or not this would meet that. Let's take a look over here first then. Mm, doesn't look like we're going to get very far here, unfortunately. Hello, what was that? A wooden floorboard. Yes, it is probably comes from this part of the wharf. The wood is slightly eaten away, of course, but it still would have been fine if it weren't smashed. Hmm. Okay. Well, good job on me for finding a board. Well, let's open it. Obviously. 
I'll never get it open barehanded. I have a bar. As a man of science, subtlety is not my strong suit. Clearly, I'm not much for manual labor. Let's see if I can uh, get it open another way. Tragic. Okay. So I can't force it, and I can't pick the lock. Crap. Okay. Well, let's remember that's down here, then. Well, I think that's it. Wait, I see something else here. Is this, or is this just that? Oh, more royal jelly. Okay, great. So this just this stuff is just going to be laying all over the place, huh? Hello. Hey, there's something not right about this floorboard. It's different from the rest. Let's pop it up. Let's Somebody look at it carefully it first. Recently, but looks like it's fixed pretty solidly in place. It's going to be tough to rip it out of here. Let's try using leverage. As a man of science, I understand basic levers. Nice. That does it. Let's see what's hidden inside. There's a book and also a bag. With a hairbrush. The Mysterium Cosmographicum. I know that book well. Mother used to read passages from it to me all the time. And judging from what I can see, it's the same one as hers. Excellent. For crying out loud, what's happened to you, Mother? Well, grab her stuff. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so manuscripts allow me to educate myself during the adventure. At the start of each quest, you can choose what to read and gain permanent skill points. Okay. Let's look inside the bag. A little food, a few toiletries, a small key. And Ooh, a key. Some kind of black powder. Okay. So are you food, eating okay? A piece of bacon and some bread. The fruit's still firm. The bread's a bit stale. From the smell, this food's been here roughly two days. And okay. if it's rationed, there's enough left to last two more days. Well, let's leave it here. Let's take a look at the belongings. Shit. Those are definitely my mother's things. I recognize her hairpins. This bag smells of her perfume. Hmm. A piece of soap. Some oils and her powder puff. But what does all this mean? Interesting. So what's this powder? The bottom of the bag is covered in black powder. Okay. What's up I with this key? key completely rusted. Uh, I'll take the key. You never know. It might be useful. I hope Mother wasn't counting on it. So should I take the rest of her stuff or not? I don't want to, like, take her stash necessarily. But let's... Let's grab it. Right. Just in case, I'll take it all. I'll give it back to Mother when I see her. Right. Seems legit. Let's see if this key opens up this Why grate. Out loud. Why did you hide supplies in the middle of nowhere, Mother? I don't know what's going on here, but you obviously feel like you're in danger. Is this key gonna help me? Nice. There we are. Easy. All right, so what do we have in here? All kinds of things. Why is this stuff blocked off, I wonder? Okay, some more rail jelly. Like a pistol case, but it's empty. That's not a good sign. I don't know if this has anything to do with you, Mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Oh, that is a good sign. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. Hmm. Okay. And what do we have over here? Hmm. This wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. <laughs> uh huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. Is that the same black powder that I have? Okay. This says. I think this is how many points it uses. I'm guessing. Let's find out. Hmm. The powder is wet. Not surprising, given the dampness of the dock. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. So, let's go through this. My mother's been hiding pieces of bread between the rotten boards of the wharf in the middle of the night. That's not normal. And if that weren't enough, it looks now like she's armed. Meanwhile, she also takes the time to send out letters, reassuring whoever might be interested that she's having a fabulous time here. So odd, so very odd. And that's not even all I've noticed. 
but maybe I had to move on to the manor now. They'll be waiting for me. Uh, Other th so. things that worry me are these manacles. That's concerning. And the fact that someone has not been keeping their powder dry. Well, that is quite strange. Okay, well, I guess let's head on up to the manor then. So far, all this has done is raise more questions, unfortunately. Hello. Latin inscription. An nesis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus vergatur. Uh, should we use a point on it? I mean, I could just search it, but let's let's use it. Let's find out. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I did. Interesting. Okay, so each person I meet in the island has their own personality, which makes them vulnerable to certain skills and immune to others. Exploiting their personality is crucial to achieve your personal goals. Skills used against immunities will not succeed and leave you exhausted, whereas exploited vulnerabilities will leave you one or give you one effort point back. Okay. You agree. Let's take a look at those. So he has conviction. Okay. Well, here we are. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Slaves. Very impressive. Lishata on a Speranza, Voike and Trate. Hello. Whoa. Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Vice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. I can take that for you. My mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Okay, so during a confrontation, you have to go through several steps while being as persuasive as possible. Confrontations have consequences. Oh, crap. Hold on. Something minimized. Okay. Confrontations have consequences on the rest of the story, so don't hesitate to use your skills. Okay. All right. Here we go. Don't screw this up. I bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Um... Let's go with the truth here. Yeah, she's been here for several weeks. Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. Hmm. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, your eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, uh, if you only knew my son, I hold your mother in the highest of God. She has rendered great service to the church. Oh, really? I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. <sighs> if only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. Right. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. Okay. That is commendable. But as we work together on a daily basis, it is surely just an oversight. Most certain. Okay. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? Let's see here. Um. He must know that she's part of the order if they're working together. So. I think let's open up just a little bit. 
my mother and I belong to the same secret organization, the Golden Order, which I joined a few years ago. Mother trained me, and I assist in her research. In other words, you can trust me. <laughs> my child, you are telling a perfect stranger that you and your mother work for a secret society. Well, yes. It would seem that discretion is not one of your specialities, my son. Don't. You will understand that it ah, does I not that encourage up. me to put my trust in you. Crap. Shit. Okay. All the same. It bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. True. Uh, I uh, hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. All right. Do you think I should give it to you? Yes, but is there a better way to put it? Um... Damn it. Do I use a whole bunch of points here? Let's... Let's... Try. Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see Ooh, her. Ooh, so he's easy to manipulate. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Hmm. Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm. What to do? Mm -hmm. Can you see a solution? Come on. Just give me the letter for crying out loud. <laughs> I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Nice. Bingo. Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one uh. other than your mother will read it? Okay, for the last step of the confrontation, you must convince the person you're talking to by giving them a positive answer. If you give the wrong answer, the step will repeat itself until either you give a right one or you have no blunders left. Okay. Uh... Should we go science? Let's do it. Let's use these points. Your eminence, that is just not possible for me. Why is that? I have always had a Cartesian mind, and I won't make false promises. I respect you too much for that. Nice. I spend my time trying to find logical and reasonable answers to problems which, at first glance, seem supernatural. I'm not saying I don't believe in God as a concept. I just oh, jeez, don't dude, don't go off on this big speech. Text. And I don't want to lie to you. Even though your answer does shock me, my son, I shall only hear your honesty. Nice. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Luce. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. Ugh. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Okay. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here. The letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. Interesting. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Okay. So many clues and items are hidden. Some of them will have an impact on your adventure, so don't hesitate to look for them. Okay. And at this point, let's go ahead and let's take a break. I think we've got a little bit of an introduction and we successfully navigated a conversation. So, hopefully this series is looking interesting to you. Please feel free to subscribe or leave a like or whatever. But in any case, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.